Your gas company presents an assault on your ears. Apparently, my gas company wants to make a sandwich with me. Still not as weird as the time my water company invited me bowling. Well, this dramatic, serious, possibly patriotic music is sure putting me in the mood for a sloppy joe. The sandwich is practically an American institution. That we stole from the British, but they stole everything too. Parties and picnics. As far as these boys are concerned, well, hamburgers and hot dogs... Yeah, they're taking the hot dog a is a sandwich side. Joke. Bold move. But there are sandwiches and sandwiches. Very distinct options. When Sally Gasco and her mother bring guests home for a late snack after a movie... The Gasco family's name was changed at Ellis Island from the Utilities Co. family. Sally calls it tuna rare bit. Let's watch how she makes it. Be very, very quiet. I'm making whale bit. This is a sandwich for fork. Not fit for humans. Face creation, in other words with a cheese, milk, and tuna fish mixture on top. It tastes the same way going down as it will coming back up. The basis will be rye bread. Or the well, Kaiser. Idea. She found that the spicy caraway flavor made a good contrast to the bland fish and cheese. Or you could just use better so toppings. They won't harden and curl when toasted, and so they'll be easier to eat later. She cuts them lightly with a knife. Oh, she uses a knife to cut. I've been using the stand mixer. Sally puts a cube about a square inch of butter into the top of a double boiler. And drinks it raw. The butter finds its way into a great many dishes in this kitchen. At the King of Town's butter, command. But as a blending agent. Blending agent man. <sighs> My children suck. I hate them so much. Oh, good work, honey. Very good work. Part of the trick to entertaining unexpected guests is keeping on hand certain generally useful foods. And spending an hour preparing One them. Is cheese of an easy melting type which Sally is going to use as a base for the rare bit. To speed the melting, she cuts this into slices in the milk and butter mixture. Just desperately waiting out those last two years for the invention of Cheese Whiz. The simmer flame keeps the water boiling gently while the cheese is melting, so that Sally can go on to other tasks. I thought sandwiches were supposed to be easy. Canned chunk-style tuna fish, and notice that she uses a wooden spoon to avoid discoloration of the mixture. Although the tuna rare bit is fairly substantial food in itself. Using all those words loosely. Add something for variation in color and texture. Let's make things that aren't sandwiches. Celery, radishes. No, no, no. Celery, apples, walnuts, grapes. Sally adds potato chips to the menu. They used to be exclusively picnic fare. But finally, They've potato chips have broken through that glass ceiling. Foods which make entertaining so much easier and more fun for teenagers. Boy, we've been stuck here forever. Rotate to the next era already. Great big beautiful tomorrow. Quickly in the broiler. And the rare bit is nearly ready to serve. Just eight more hours of preparation. Let's see. What will be the beverage? You tell us! Mother thinks she'll give the guests a choice of Coke or milk. Cake or death. When you can offer guests a choice easily, it's a gracious gesture. But they do not get to choose a better sandwich. Now it's time to serve. Sally has the deadly nightshade and phase two of the plan begins. And the filling, or perhaps we should say covering, goes on top. These boomers just slathering crap on top of rye and then they blame us for avocado toast. dishes with extra caution. An effect of carelessness here is no asset. Yeah, wouldn't want to make that look ugly. Mother is a great believer in the aesthetic value of parsley. She attends the church of the aesthetic value of parsley every week. Now, a touch of Tabasco for color and a taste surprise. Parsley and Tabasco and doing a lot of heavy lifting here. A la Sally Gasco. As we said, there are sandwiches and sandwiches. And nothing in this film was a sandwich. Using good techniques and equipment and a the boys are just still eating burgers because if they ate the tuna rare bit, the filmmakers would have to give them hazard pay. Your gas company reminds you to just shove parsley in your guests' mouths. Boy, I really expected them to make a sandwich in Let's Make a Sandwich. Well, I was just about to go get some lunch, but after looking at that tuna rare bit, I think I'll never be hungry again. Thanks, 50s cooking. Like many of my riffs, I started writing this on one of my Patreon live streams, and I want to thank Gabby, Margaret, and Rob for joining me in the chat and helping me brainstorm jokes. This short gave us a lot of material to work with, even if it didn't give us that much time to work with.
And that's why, if you join the Patreon at the $2 or more level, this Thursday you'll get to see a video of deleted, alternate, and extended jokes from this very riff. It was really hard to narrow the script down to just the jokes you heard, and I think some of the jokes that were caught are just as funny as the ones that made it in. They all would be in there if they all could fit, but blame the makers of the short for making it so short. On the Patreon, you can also get an early look at the video that will go public later this month. It's a brand new Armchair Imagineering that serves as a follow-up to the very first episode of Armchair Imagineering. And if you remember that first episode, I think you'll know why this topic warrants a YAY! And as a reminder, there are hours upon hours upon hours of bonus videos and podcasts available on Patreon. If you're after bonus content, you'll definitely get your money's worth out of a subscription, and you'll help make sure that I can spend more of my time making things for you instead of doing boring work to afford rent. Thanks again for watching, and may all of your sandwiches be much better than whatever we just watched Sally make. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.